Hey, thanks for joining me again on Workshop Quick Takes. Today I'm looking at some center caps from an uh, older Jeep wheel. Now on the surface, all four of these look pretty nice and in fact, they're in really good condition. This was a lucky find on Craigslist. I got the wheels with these nice center caps for about the same price as buying just four slightly gamier center caps on eBay. Unfortunately, these are getting rarer and more expensive. So I'm looking at them thinking, well, what happens if I break one, say in a year? Am I still gonna be able to get it? And I'm thinking, you know, this is a really flimsy design and that's one of the reasons why they break. So what could I do preemptively to reinforce it? And so I ended up at this. This here is a collection of parts and pieces and glues that significantly reinforces the structure of this thing without significantly increasing the weight, I hope. I got the scales back here to check on that. But come along today and find out what I did and maybe it'll give you some ideas for keeping your ride going a little longer. Before continuing further, let's just take a quick look and see if it's worth doing this to all four of these. I mean, if that thing gets heavy as a rock, then it's gonna work against these little uh, three screw support positions and eventually just tear it off faster. So that would be kind of a bad trade-off to reinforce it and then have it just fall on the side of the trail because it was too heavy and broke away. So let's look real quick and just compare the weight of this unmodified one to this one, or technically I should say mass. Turning on the scales, tearing it out just to make sure it's at zero. Okay, here is one of the unmodified wheel centers. I'm getting 3.8 ounces or 108 grams. So now let's pull that back off, make sure we return to zero. Here's our modified one. How much weight did we add? We are now at 6.52 ounces or 185 grams. So 108, 109 grams versus 184 grams. So we didn't even double the mass of it, which is nice. And a good chunk of that's coming from this little guy right here, which adds 45 grams all on its own. So with that teaser, let's look at our supplies today. This here is an ABS pipe coupler. Um, this one I believe is a two inch to two inch. Let's just double check that real quick. 2.370 inches interior di diameter. Oh right, yeah, so schedule 40 PVC. The inside diameter of the pipe this would be coupling would probably correspond to that little lip in there roughly. And it happens to be just about the right diameter to do this. Another reason why I chose this particular device is I didn't have to cut it down at all. Dropped in there, it happens to sit just a hair below the level of this, but notice that it's slightly loose. So I had a couple ideas about that and what I finally settled on, plastic gas line strap. What I can do is take some of this hanger strap find a way to wind it around the outside of this a couple times until it just nicely fills in here without over expanding it. And if we look closely again to the one I already finished, you can see evidence of that in there. We'll get into how I did that in a minute, but there's the uh, actual plastic, there's the gas line strap on the bottom end, and then it's wound around a couple times before being tacked here at the top. And that provides the extra phew, that's needed. All right, so plastic gas line strap. What is a possible way we can think of to get that to wind tightly around here without pulling loose? Well, I had a couple ideas. And the one I finally settled on was to take a blade of some kind and just notch it at an angle. There we go. Opposite to the direction that I will be pulling it. Now I wanna be careful not to go overboard on this either because I don't want it much deeper than the actual strap itself. I just want the strap to pull into there. See if we're getting close. And a little deeper. Okay, there we go. That's almost an exact fit. And notice we did go fairly far down into there, but we didn't actually reach the uh, inner lip. So that's fine. So the next step is gonna be to try and measure off roughly enough of this to go around it at an angle opposite to where I have it in there. And that way this sort of just pulls itself in under its own tension. I don't have to do an additional screw or some other securing mechanism down here that I might have to countersink and hide somehow. Okay, it looks to me like I did this on the previous one. I came around, I overlapped it slightly. I came around again, continuing to slightly, oops, that's not quite enough. And there we go, I think. Alrighty, righty, next step here. I've got a small stainless steel screw. It doesn't need to be big. It's not gonna be structural once this thing is all put together, but it will hold this in place while I finish the next assembly steps and have some glue that cures and things like that. The main thing is that it is stainless steel. Now it's on the floor. And I'm just gonna tap a hole in here. 
I'm gonna put that piece of tape there because why not? It's gonna keep it from popping off on me like a clock spring. And there's my screw. Now let's take a look at that. That just barely fits in there. It's not, it's tight, but it's not pushing it apart, which would be bad because I don't want to be adding outward stresses on this. I want it to just be snug so that once I glue it down, I don't have to use the glue as a structural component. It's just holding things together. So that'll be a good start. All right, next step of this process is this nifty stuff here. This is a 3M Black Super Weather Strip and Gasket Adhesive. This is a somewhat runny polyurethane adhesive, which is I think a relative of what you would use to secure a windshield, but it's not quite as tacky. And this one you're supposed to apply and then just let it tack up for a bit before doing your uh, actually putting things together. But what I'm gonna do is two things really that I didn't hear. One is I don't want to actually seal over this spot right here because if I do and I ever had to pop out that Jeep center cap, I'd never be able to get to it again. This one here, there's just enough room to get a screwdriver in there at it if I really had to. Second of all, I want this screw which is going to be in the way and later to be pointing at one of these little uh, prongs and not at one of the screw holes. So go ahead and add a generous portion of adhesive down in here. For this next step, I'll kindly mute that guy who keeps blathering and soothe your parched ears with a continuing musical score and smooth voiceover. Alright, for the next step, we decided that some kind of metal reinforcement was required to brace the rim of the wheel cap and the three screw standoffs. The standoffs are an obvious weak point in the cap's design, but we didn't want to add a bunch of additional mass. To solve that dilemma, a spool of galvanized steel wire was procured. This particular lot had a diameter of 0.045 inch. The exact diameter isn't important, it just needed to be strong enough to be useful, but thin enough to form in place using hands and small pliers. Also with fire. Anywhere the wire needed to adhere to the plastic, we first heated it to a dull red with a propane torch, then pressed it into its final position in the plastic and held it in place until it cooled. Of course, if you overdo this kind of process, the hot wire will cut right through the plastic, so work methodically and don't try to be too fast. Step one was to run a wire all the way around the cap perimeter using the two alignment nubs rather than the three screw standoffs as our anchor points. Step two was to create little triangular sections and reinforce each screw standoff directly to the center assembly. This time the goal was to pierce the entire center assembly with the heated wire while reinforcing the screw standoffs with a simple plier crimp and more adhesive. We didn't want to damage the three standoff locations because they are essential to keeping this particular cap installed on its host wheel, so no heat at these points. Finally, everything was glued with more 3M weather strip adhesive. And just to be clear, 3M isn't sponsoring this episode. They don't have to sponsor it to get our support. In general, we have found that their products just work, provided they are used within a ballpark range of their specified application. With that done, we've got another reinforced wheel center cap. Repeat four times with adequate adhesive curing time for each unit, and we ended up with four reinforced center caps that were ready for reinstallation. Hey guys, thanks for joining today, that's it. Before trying to replicate anything you saw on here, just make sure that you're working with material that can actually tolerate the techniques that we demonstrated. For example, before you try to do anything with heat, make sure you are in fact working with a thermoplastic. On any relatively recent vehicle, that's usually gonna be a given, but if you're trying to reinforce plastics on a really old classic vehicle, all bets off. In any case, 
Thanks for dropping by. See you next time on Workshop Quick Takes. Has anyone seen my phone?